All right. We're going to move right into Cadillac. There are two things that we're after, right? We're after strengthening. We're after mobility of the upper quadrant, right? And restricted mobility in the shoulders and neck and thoracic spine, I should say shoulders and thoracic spine and scapular region is going to create more tension in the neck. If we can release tension in the neck, we're really going to help that cervical spine. So part of it is releasing tension. The other part is strengthening the structures. So this particular ones, these ones fall into mobility. This would be mobility of shoulders and thoracic spine for Peclat and BB Swan. So here, typically I would have, a, as an instructor, I would have my hand on the bar all the time that the person had the bar here as they're gonna lay down on their stomach. So, and always being aware that as, especially with this bar, doesn't, I don't have the safety bar on. So if I push forward, the bar is gonna keep going forward. So making sure that that's safely secured with your hand on it. So somebody doesn't let go and let the bar fly here. So here for Peclat stretch, I get them situated forehead down, and I'm gonna find the length through the body. So belly is up, baby bone down, tail and spine really reaching long, so I'm avoiding compression back there. Forehead stays down, and I'm gonna bend the elbows up and back, so opening up the chest there. And then inhaling, reaching long forward, big inhale. And exhale, elbows opening up and wide. And then reaching forward. And one more. So that's the pec, pec lat. And usually I can put a hand on and give them a little bit more in the lengthening here. So I could stretch the bar long away with my hand on it. Give them a little more stretch there if, if it was needed. I can also just guide this motion. But I usually let them do the work here. You don't want to over pull this. Over pulling here can create tension in the neck, so just enough to open the chest and shoulders. Right. And so then when I'm here, I'm going to take a breath in, exhale, shrug the shoulder blades down. I usually do a few just shoulder blade shrugs before I go into any sort of swanning here. And that just activates the shoulder blades, puts the shoulders in their sockets, and then I'll shrug down and then let myself start to float upward. Right, My head, hopefully just following along with my spine, not lifting on its own accord, and then inhaling back down. So exhale, shrugging and floating. Right, trying to really open the upper back. So I'm trying to keep my low ribs down, not, not coming up here, right, for a big swan, but just leaving those ribs down, shrugging the shoulders in and letting that just slowly open my chest more and more. And then inhaling away. And then one more, just like that. So chest coming up, opening up, shoulder blades squeezing, and then back down. The roller is one of my favorite places to be for, we've talked about this, for postural reasons and supportive reasons. So if they're not so acute that they can't get on the roller, then you wanna try and get them on the roller for a lot of reasons I'll explain as we go. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down along the roller here. What I'm trying to get here is that neutral spine position. So really trying to get everything relaxed. Hips, uh, hip bones and knees and feet all aligned, right? And my little space between my low back and the roller here so that I'm in my neutral, I've got a little space here. I've got a little space behind my neck, right? And the weight is between my shoulder blades on my sacrum and the back of the head. So we can combine, you could combine some of your mat work onto the roller or some of your mat ideas onto the roller. Uh, and that would be like just that chin tuck or head nod. You could do it on the mat or on the roller. What I like to do is just have people kind of get here, relax down, take a breath in, and then exhale. And just let themselves sort of just sink for a moment and get situated. The hips, knees, feet should be in alignment. And then I have been lately having people just take their thumbs and put them under the skull here and just stretch the back of the neck a little bit longer so that I'm not chin up in the air. So those people with tightness in the lower, uh, in the posterior cervical, right, so those rectus capiti muscle region are going to end up being a bit chin up here. So that's a really good cue is to start with the thumbs there 
And then that would lead you right into the head nod exercise. So that would be a breath in and then exhaling, just trying to stretch the back of the neck. So they could do it without their hands or they could do it cueing the thumbs, just pulling up on the occiput a little bit and then relaxing, right? 